Welcome to the next instalment in the Southern Highlands ride. This is the final instalment and in this section I am on the Hume motorway just near, starting near the uh, truck checking point at Maroolan and I am on my way to Goulburn. Now I should point out at the beginning of this video now that um, due to technical matters the uh, video doesn't take you doesn't take me all the way to my home. What happened is that the uh, I think the card must have filled up. This camera records at a higher resolution, I think, than the other camera I use. And the software that comes with it seems to split the clips into um, each clip, split the video into clips that are about 3.4 or 3.5 gig each. Now it's only a 16 gig card. So I think what happened is the card filled up because when I got home, the camera was still operating. It was still life in the battery. Uh, but as you will see in the video, I uh, made it to, um, I think close to the McDonald's at North Goulburn uh, and then the um, camera stopped recording. Uh, that's about four kilometers from my home. And um, there's really not much to talk about in that section of the video anyway, other than just be going down the main street of Goulburn, which you've probably seen in other videos of mine when I've been going out of town. So, as I said, on the Hume motorway heading towards Goulburn, um, you can see that, uh, I wouldn't say it's chock a block with traffic, certainly not, but um, petrol tankers and big trucks are often are common on this road, and um, they tend to be getting from A to B as quickly as they can, bearing in mind what I'd said in the last video about point-to-point -point cameras and um, truck checking stations and so on. Um, and uh, if you're riding a motorcycle, even one like mine, which is, as I've said several times now, fairly big, 400, almost 400 kilos wet, it um, can be a bit of a challenge. If you get behind them, you have to work out What's the, how far behind them do I have to be so I don't feel the buffeting from the wind that sort of is in the slipstream of them? If I get too close, do I get caught up in the slipstream? Uh, there's a fine point where you can just feel you're getting caught up in that buffeting and so on. And so then you want to pull out perhaps and get uh, beside them and overtake them. They're not certainly, certainly not, and they don't have to, uh, are going to slow their speed down any, any, in any way to make it easy for you to get past. So you just got to go with whatever you do and uh, hopefully get past them and get sufficiently in front of them that you can maintain the speed and enjoy your ride and all those kind of things without um, causing them any problems and without causing yourself any problems. Uh, as I said, you're on the human motorway here, the dual carriageway with two lanes in both directions. I've talked about the state of the road before and um, again this is a section that seems to, to support what I say about it generally being pretty well maintained. Um, good shoulders, uh, lane butt markings and markings on the edges of the road as well. Um, Guardrails where they need to be and those kind of things. All of that to make it as safe as a road can be, bearing in mind what I'd said in the previous video about dead straight roads that go from A to B and the, the potential for driver fatigue. Again, this area, uh, I guess to describe the landscape, would be sort of open woodland in that, as you can see, there are um, lots of trees along the edges of the road here. It's still quite open and spacious and you don't feel that closing feeling that when the trees are right close to the edge of the road. Um, but a little further back from the tree line, there are open pastures and paddocks. In some cases, they belong to um, farmers who obviously use them for pastoral reasons. This around here, it's mainly fine wool, uh, but other sections, I think, are just crown land and have no use. The day I recorded this, which is the 19th of August 2021, the uh, COVID lockdown in Goulburn has been in effect for five days. 
and was uh, due to be ended on Sunday, which would have been the 21st. Oh, sorry, that's not Friday, it's Thursday. Sorry, I'll start all that again. Thursday, the 19th of August. And the lockdown was meant to come to an end on Sunday, the 22nd of August. But we've just been informed that it's been extended for another seven days and that there are some cases of the COVID virus in Darwin. How many cases, I don't know. Uh, that number's not been given, but there are some cases here. So that means, of course, going out for... Uh, recreational rides on your motorcycle are not allowed because you're not meant to travel more than five kilometres from your home um, unless it's an unavoidable emergency like medical treatment or something like that and even then where possible you're meant to stay within your local government area so obviously if I left and went more than five kilometres from my home um, I would be in breach of orders and I don't intend to do that at the moment um, Someday, I don't know when, I don't know if anyone else does it to say, but someday there'll be a post-COVID world and we'll be able to do some, if not all, of the things we used to be able to do. If you've come across my channel or come across this video through Facebook, then uh, if you follow the link, you can go to my YouTube channel. And I've said all this before, but I'll say it again. I don't, uh, I'm not asking you to subscribe for any commercial reason. I don't make any money out of any of these videos. I have no commercial arrangements. I just do it for fun. But if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see that I have a number of playlists including uh, some running videos for those who are interested in watching somebody run and listen to people listen to that person talk about running and see some of the running tracks that are available in Goulburn. Uh, there are some videos about places in and around Goulburn. There are videos about places in Tasmania, mostly in northern Tasmania, northeast Tasmania, around Launceston. And there are videos that I've called Bedtime Stories. They are literally what the title said. I read a book uh, and um, children can see the, the pages and see the words and the pictures of the book and just hear me reading it. And I made those um, stories uh, as fun for my grandchildren when they were a little younger. I think they're probably both, uh, the ones that I made it for are probably both too old for them now. Uh, but I know that from some of the comments that uh, teachers in schools use some of the videos for their uh, students and I think my parents use them when they run out of stories to read their, their children. Maybe teachers just log on to them themselves, I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm just saying they're there and you're most welcome to either subscribe if you want or just watch the videos and be, I'm happy to be shared them with anybody you want to share them with. Uh, after the title screen on this video, you would have seen the map that uh, sh showed you the route of this uh, trip. And at the end, there'll be a second map that shows you the same using some sort of tracking device or tracking data that Google uses. It basically tells me once a month, this is where your phone has been. Um, and obviously, the phone goes wherever I go. Uh, especially well, when I'm out when I'm out driving or motorcycling or whatever, it doesn't always go with me when I'm outside walking or whatever, or running. But if I'm out driving or motorcycling in particular, I take the phone with me and there's some sort of um, tracking software or something that sends me a thing every month that says this is where your phone has been and that's where I got that map from. So if you wanted to um, take this trip yourself, and if it's from Goldman or from anywhere in Anywhere in the Southern Islands, you could see the map and see where I went. Um, 
this particular section of the road it, um, just kind of reinforces my view from the previous videos about um, road building and attempting to build a road dead straight. Okay, there's a small incline for your car to get up, but it's certainly not a struggle for any car, any modern car. Um, I know re even runners who would run up that hill that we've just passed and think it wasn't much of a challenge to them. Um, so, you know, the idea, as I mentioned in the last video, is to build a road that is, um, gets you from A to B as quickly as possible, which is usually a straight line. And uh, if you've got to cut through the hill and create a cutting or something, then you do that. As you've seen in all of these, uh, in all the clips, this was a, uh, took this right on the 1st of August. Um, sorry, just interrupting there, the camera malfunctioned, the camera, uh, the screw mount that the camera is on became, uh, came loose because of vibrations through the, through the windscreen. And um, I've had to stop in a moment and um, tighten it back up so that it's now facing outwards the way it should be. And, and continue with the filming. But as I was saying, it's a bright sunny day in August, the 1st of August. And when I say bright sunny day, it was probably about 14 or 15 degrees, which I guess by summer days are not considered to be bright, war, uh, warm and sunny. But for August in Goulburn, certainly is. And um, I think I probably had one, two, three, maybe four layers on, including uh, my dry rider jacket, which has a zip out quilted mining. Um, so about this stage of the day I was beginning to feel quite warm just because you're out in the sun and the sun's on your back all the time. Um, but because I was so close to home I didn't see much point in um, stopping and taking anything off. I probably would have done if I was continuing to ride for much longer because uh, in the same way that cold can be fatiguing because your body's trying to um, keep you warm and by doing that cuts down circulation to the extremities and saves the blood for the core, uh, the heat, it's difficult to cool yourself off and uh, if you've got you know, um, warm clothing on and it's all zipped up and there's no air circulating through it, then you can get equally as fatigued from being too warm. I fix the camera back on the road. You've seen the petrol tanker roaring past me. I talked earlier about my comfort zone as a rider generally being between 90 and 100 kilometres an hour. I'm on the highway here and I've probably got the on shirt and I have the cruise control engaged. It's probably, uh, the speedo probably says 110, but it, we know that speedos are not always 100% accurate. So probably somewhere close to 105. But I still feel that um, in this case it's within my comfort zone. As a, um, my, and so, you know, takes account of my capabilities as a rider and my bike's capabilities and the road and all those sort of things I had spoken about before. The Goldwyn turn off is now about a kilometre away.
Just going on to the Goldman turn off now. Drop down probably into fifth gear here. The speed limit on this off ramp is 80 kilometres an hour. Just coming to the outskirts of, of uh, Goulburn now, so the northern end of Goulburn, and uh, we'll soon be running out of um, film here, so I'll say thank you once again for watching and listening, and um, I will talk to you when I'm running my next set of videos about a ride to Braden. So thank you, I hope you've enjoyed the videos, and I'll talk to you in the next video broadcast.